I'm Tor. And I'm Luke. And we are the co-creators of Torchbearer. And today we're going to do a walkthrough of a simple conflict demo. Uh, so in this scenario, Luke is going to be playing his dwarf character, Baron, the outcast. At your service. Uh, who is investigating the dread crypt of Skagenby. It's midnight and you've looked at the dolmen uh, standing stone outside, investigated the strange scribblings uh, on it, uh, and you are now ready to plumb the depths of the tomb itself. Uh, so you said you'd lit a torch. There are two turns left on the torch. Baron is carrying it. Torch in one hand. You said you dropped your backpack. I'm gonna leave my backpack out here. I feel good. I got trusty hand axe, shield strapped to my back, wine skin, and in I go. All right, aggressive. Uh, so you get down on your hands and knees, holding the torch in front of you um, through this narrow passage um, into the tomb beyond. You emerge into this long, narrow corridor. The walls of this corridor are made of bones. There is an archway off to the left and what appear to be a few recessed alcoves on the right-hand side beyond the archway. And in the middle, there seems to be like a recessed basin or a font. I'm sure it's not filled with blood. <laughs> All right, before we get to that, let's check out these alcoves. What do we got? All right, so you poke your head around the alcove and you see that there are actually several alcoves. And each one holds a beer, like a resting place, uh, with a skeleton on it, feet towards you. Um, they are dressed in, in rotting garb. Most of it is, has probably disintegrated with time, over time. Um, the, the one that you see has uh, a spear crossed across its chest, and there's another one with a sword. Uh, and glimmering in the torchlight, glittering around uh, the first one's neck, you see what might be some jewelry. Ooh. Well, my belief is uh, there's not for me but blood and treasure, spent and earned. So, um, in I go. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, we're gonna get in, get out. Just grab it and go. So you're gonna have to crawl up over the skeleton to get to its neck. I, I've done worse for less, let's just say. All right, so torch held high, you you crawl, try to trying to avoid the bones as much as you can. Just do a little reach. Put your, your hand forward. Over the reach, skeleton. Um, to reach for, for what turns out to be a jeweled torque. Hell yes. And as you put your hand on it, this vision flashes in your mind of two pale, cold blue eyes. Is it cursed? And you can sense that something somewhere in this tomb is aware of your presence. Uh, and just as you come to that realization, you see these cold lambent flames start to burn in the eye sockets oh, of the skeleton, and it begins to sit up. Oh. I will uh, scramble to safety uh, and um, consider my next move. <laughs> All right, so you you back up and you scramble back uh, and you hear the clattering of bones and from the other alcove emerges a second skeleton, tomb guardian, and the first one also comes out uh, and begins slowly walking toward you. Well, uh, I think I will, um, uh, if I manage to keep a hold of the torque, I w will drop it and fetch up my hand axe uh, and, and to defend myself. Or I think I'm going to try to push them off into the other room or corridor uh, and try to claim what is rightfully mine. All right, great. That sounds like a drive off conflict. Let's do it. Drive off conflict. Uh, the first thing we need to do is generate disposition. So you're going to roll your fighter skill and add your successes to your health. My fighter skill is four and I got two successes. So that makes my disposition seven because my health is five. So okay. okay. So the two guardians have a disposition of eight. How does that work? Uh, so if we look at the tomb guardian in the book, we look at its drive off hit points or seven and there are two of them so we add one so you add one for each additional you know okay yep so the one with the, the spear is going to have four and the one with the sword is going to have four so you, then you so you take the hit points that you generate and divide them among the creatures that i'm controlling right and so since i'm just one i keep all my hit points but you have to okay that's right 
The next thing uh, we have to do is choose weapons. Uh, and you should know that in a drive-off conflict, attack and feint use the fighter skill, and defend and maneuver use your will. Okay, cool. So if I use my hand axe, which has no additional dice, I would be rolling my fighter or will at four or three. But if I use the shield to defend, I would roll will plus the shields to defend dice. Right. And okay. the shield could also be used for the other actions as well. But if but it has a special bonus to defend. Correct. Great. I also have a torch in my hand, which I can use as an improvised weapon, uh, but if I use it for a bonus, it gets extinguished, so we'll save that. I'm going to go with a hand axe for my to start? first okay. round. Yep. So one of my Tomb Guardians is going to be wielding a spear, and the other one has a sword. I'm going to choose my actions, and then you can discuss with your team uh, what your actions are going to be. All right. There are four action types in Torchbearer. Attack, Defend, Feint, and Maneuver. So I need to choose a selection of three of these for Baron to overcome Tor's strategy. Tor has chosen uh, a selection of actions for the Tomb Guardians. So I want to choose actions that are going to protect Baron, but also get me the best advantage and help me reduce his Tomb Guardian hit points to zero. So Attack, Defend, Feint, and Maneuver. The hit points of our two teams are roughly equivalent, seven to eight. I feel comfortable about that, but uh, there's two of them, so they're going to have helping dice, they're going to gang up on me, it's going to be ugly. So I am going to go for broke. I'm going to use my, uh, my hit points while I have them. Uh, I'm expecting to take some damage here in this fight. I'm going to push a pretty aggressive strategy, uh, and I'm going to gamble on being able to use my hand axe for, for gain in this fight, as I'll show you. So first, I'm going to lead with an attack. We're going to try to knock one of them down, see what I can do. Then I'm going to follow up with a maneuver to try to gain some advantage and, and uh, protect myself a bit. And then I'm going to follow it up with an attack. If I've chosen this right, my hand axe is going to gain me a little uh, edge. So now, so that I've chosen my actions, you've chosen your actions, what happens next tour? All right, so now we go back to describe. We, we reveal our actions, okay. and we describe what we're doing. So, right. volley one. Volley one. You have an attack. I have a maneuver. The skeletons emerge from their, their alcoves they, uh, uh, into uh, the long, narrow hallway, and they get shoulder to shoulder and raise their weapons, menacing you, and start marching toward you in lockstep. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm just going to... Uh crash down, like snap that spear and and crack some heads there with the hand axe. Okay. Yeah, and the, the spear is going first. And so attack against maneuver, the interaction is listed on the card. I'm looking at the M result, and that's a V, and that means versus. We're going to roll against one another. Mm -hmm. So you are attacking. You're going to roll your fighter skill. Mm -hmm. And I am going to be rolling three dice for the spear bearer's nature plus one for the help from the one with the sword. I'm maneuvering, so the, the Tomb Guardian with the spear gets plus one D from the spear. Great. So five dice. And since they're versus, whoever has the most successes wins. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, interesting. Uh, so what happens in the case of a tie? Well, normally we would go to a tiebreaker or something like that, but as an adventurer, you have a might of three. Mm -hmm. My Tomb Guardians have a might of two. So you break ties in your favor. Ooh, and then attack damages your opponent's disposition by one per margin of success. So I, do I have a margin of success of one? That's right. So I believe you take one hit point of damage. All right. I do. All right. Go might. Okay. Uh, volley two. Two. Let's see what you got, buddy. All right. <laughs> we're, we're mirroring each other. The Tomb Guardians have marched in lockstep. The one with the sword uh, points it to you, uh, toward you and lunges uh, to try to catch Baron off guard. I am going to play for space. Uh, I am going to use Baron's knowledge of the underworld uh, and his time spent delving uh, in order to yeah, um, create a little distance between myself and that sword. Okay. Uh, so in this case, my maneuver, I roll my will, huh? Yep. I'm going to be rolling three dice for my Tomb Guardians, one for help, and I'm going to attach the sword die to attack. Sword gets plus one die to any one action per conflict. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Well, can I use Baron's born under earth and stone trait, since I described him using the you know his knowledge of the underworld here? Uh, can I use that for advantage? Uh, yeah. All right. So I roll three dice plus one die for his will. Okay. Hey, four. I also have four, but again, you have might three, I have might two, so you win with a margin of one. So tie breaks in my favor again mm -hmm. due to our might disparity. Okay, well, um, so I will impede you on the next action. Margin of success one for maneuver. Uh, so yeah, maybe you, you start breaking away from each other, the sword lunges forward or something. Like I want to lead them on a little bit, create some okay. distance for my next action. Sounds good. So uh, let's talk about that last action then. What do you got? So these are independent. That means that any dice, that any successes that we roll will damage the other, unless you use your hand axe. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I I'm going to go for it. So hand axe special ability converts independent attack to a versus attack. So right. I'm and the to... idea is that you're throwing it, right? Yeah, I'm going to throw it. So I'm going to try to outrange that sword and damage them before they can damage me. Okay, so... This time my, my dice are a little different. I still have the three dice for my Tomb Guardian's nature, plus one D from help, mm -hmm. and then minus one D because of the impede. So I'm rolling three dice. Uh, three. Only two. Ooh, okay. So you get plus one success from your might, right? And so, so you have- a, Not just on ties, but even when I win. Correct. But not if I fail. Correct. Okay. Fantastic. So if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, that means that you have a margin of two. Yes, so you our versus tests clash. Uh, your two successes negate my two successes. I have one remaining, plus one for might, so you take two points of damage. All right, so the spear bearer is almost out. Fantastic. There's one point of disposition left. Okay. So that is the end of round one. So what weapon are you going to equip for the second round? I'm gonna go with shield. Shield's a good fighting weapon. Okay, I'm gonna stick with my spear and my sword. So this time, because of the way the actions worked last time, the Tomb Guardian with the sword is gonna go first, spear second, sword third. So, sword, spear, sword, right, mm -hmm. okay. All right, and I'm going to choose my actions. Uh -huh. See if I can catch you out. Okay, so my opponents, Wounded as they are, have a sword, spear, and then sword again. So this helps me choose my actions. So if if the sword is going first and it's attached to an attack, let's say that Tor, if he's not going to be tricky, an attack is likely. So I want to try to uh, protect myself. I could defend with the shield, but uh, I haven't lost any points, so it, that doesn't get me a lot. So um, I will choose another action to protect me. And then the spear is probably going to maneuver for advantage again, because it has a bonus to maneuver, so then I will play an action to counter that. And then after that, well, we're just all in to win. So I have selected my actions. Great. What have you got for action one? Action one, let's see if I guessed correctly. Maneuver. I'm attacking. Okay, fantastic. The Tomb Guardians, uh, the, the one with the spear, uh, is kind of holding you off and, and uh, narrowing your range of actions. And then the one with the sword uh, comes forward in these chopping motions, um, trying to uh, to cut Baron down. So I've been kiting them a little bit, backing off, backing off, and uh, yeah, I'm going to try to slip under their guard. No successes! Holy cow! All right, I got two. Two points of damage, okay, from but, the attack. Right, but Baron has leather armor, right? So let's roll for the leather armor. On a four, five, or six, the leather absorbs one point of damage. Roll this. Nothing. Nope. Okay, so you take two points of damage. Two points. Oh, let's actually get this. Off there. Okay. All right, I'm, All right. I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling okay. good. Okay. Lolly two. Faint. What do you got? Uh oh. Uh oh. Defend. I defended. Defend. Oh. oh I miscalculated. I All thought you were going to do that in this first action. All right, so a feint against a defend is independent. What is a defend against a feint? I get nothing. Ooh, so I I get around, I take a hit um, as I kind of try to close you off, but feint uses my fighter ability. So yeah, so I'm going to just kind of shrug off that tag that you just delivered to me. I'm, uh, I'm scarred, so I just don't feel the pain in the mm -hmm. moment. 
Uh, my fighter skill is four, and yeah, I'm gonna try to to use the shield to hit one of them in the back of the skull as I kind of come around behind. Yeah, I, I, I think that they all, almost go back to back uh, as an attempt to defend and maybe mm. open themselves up to you. This is All right, this is great. This is my big shot here, using Scarred for myself, plus my fighter. Three successes. Three, all right, so that's actually four because of the might difference. Fantastic. How am I doing? You just knocked the spear bearer out. Woo! Okay. Uh, how many hit points does the sword uh, bearer have? One. One hit point. Okay. All Let's right. Let's see what happens in the good. final action of round two. Attack. Oh, Attack. I'm also attacking. The tomb guardians are uh, obviously undead. Uh, they have no fear for uh, for their flesh, for they have none. Mm. Um, so it uh, you know steps forward as it, its uh, companion goes down uh, and tries to uh, stab you in the face. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do have fear, uh, and it is fueling my actions here as I take the the sword on the shield and just barrel this thing over. It it seems like it's on its last legs. Right. Yeah. So. I have lost the helping die because I only have one Tomb Guardian left, so Ooh. I've got three, but I'm attacking, and the sword is four attacks, so I've got four dice. Okay. Uh, I have a fighter four, the shield doesn't give me any bonus. Oh! I rolled the black word. No way. Woo! I got so two! Zero successes, so that's three, uh, but I only have one left. So you knock me out, and I do nothing to you. Ooh. Uh, so what is the final result? You win, but... I have taken two hit points of damage. All right, so minor compromise. Okay, what does that mean? This was a drive off, so you don't destroy them. Uh, instead, you successfully drive them off. And I, I think what happens is, you know, those two eyes that you saw um, with your, your vision, you know, they, they flash in your mind again. And just as they do, both Tomb Guardians go bolt upright turn on their heels and march down the hallway and turn into an archway that you hadn't even noticed before. I, I let them go. <laughs> but I do get a compromise. I think I'm just going to make you afraid. But now this feels good. Yeah, now it feels well, natural, well, Baron. Don't, don't feel too good yet because that was also the fourth turn. Fourth turn on the grind. Oh on the boy, grind. so you are now hungry and thirsty. Ah, uh, yes, so I am. Fortunately, Baron's Wine skin is full of wine. Perhaps we can take care of this. But I have one more very important question. The glittering torque. Oh, yes. Did they so leave it behind? All of the treasure that they were carrying, they took with them when they, uh, when they were driven off. Um, but you did pull that torque off the one's neck before things started. So that is there. It is pack one. <laughs> oh, I'm going to wear it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, then neck one. And you can mark down that it's worth 5D of cash. Mm, fantastic. There you go. That is a simple demo of a Torchbearer conflict. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm Tor. I'm Luke. Co-creators of Torchbearer. Uh, you can find the game at burningwheel.com or your local game store. Thanks again. Hope to see you soon. Okay, wow, there we go. That's me, that's me everybody. Black no word. successes, black word, as we say in the business. No successes, all right, wow.